Feedback and Ochre play Reeson and Stewart in World Doubles Action, Sunday at 5 on World Championship Tennis on WSNS TV 44 Chicago. Here's the first pitch of the fourth inning, and it's fouled away. Upstairs by Willie Horton. Hello again, everyone. I'm Joe McConnell, coming to you from Comiskey Park, where we've endured an hour and a half rain delay. And it's two to one in favor of the Mariners here in the top of the fourth inning. Horton, who was the first batter after that 90 minute rain delay, was hit by a pitch facing Trout the first time up. Willie's been in a year long slump. In fact, they sent him home for a couple of days about two weeks ago. Another foul out of play, and it's strike two. Boy, Molinero's drive to right really got pushed foul by the wind. It would not have been out of here. It hit about a foot shy of the top of the fence, but it was only about three feet foul. Started out like it was going to be fair all the way. Strike three, and Horton can't believe it. Pitch caught the inside part of the strike zone about letter high. And he's caught looking. That's the second strikeout for Trout. Bill Stein, who hit a deep drive to right that Harold Baines made a superb catch on back in the second inning, is up now. Straight right down the pipe, 0 and 1. There's a look at Daryl Johnson, the Mariner manager. They're off to the best start in club history. High fly ball again to right. Stein going the opposite way. Morrison drops the ball. He overran it. And he boots the ball clear into foul territory. And Stein's going all the way to third. He overran the ball. And in his anxiety, reaching back to try to make the catch, he swiped at it. And he hit it with his glove and knocked it into foul territory. Let's take another look at that bizarre bounce. It's just a little looper into shallow right field. I thought it was Baines' ball all the way, but Morrison kept coming after it. Now watch him. He overran the ball and trying to pull it in with both hands. He literally flipped it right over his shoulder off his glove in the foul territory. And Stein is all the way around to third on the air by Jimmy Morrison. Boy, there's never a dull moment. Fastball inside to Ted Cox, who bounced to second his first time up. Well, <laughs> you can't get a, a tougher play than that because if he drops the ball, if he just outright drops it, Stein is on second. But when he got his glove on it, he gave him another base. Bouncing ball to the pulled up infield, and Morrison gloves it, throws him out, and the runner had the hole. That a boy, Jimmy. So Ted Cox has bounced out twice to Morrison. And the Sox with a pulled in infield got a break when the ball was hit right at Morrison. So Stein had to hang on to third. Now, Tony LaRussa quickly out to talk with Steve Trout. I wonder if the young left hander is ailing here or whether they're talking something over specifically on how to pitch the next batter who is switch hitting Rodney Craig, who got a single under Pryor's glove the first time up. And I think that's probably what that was all about. There are two out, Stein on at third. Now Junior Moore is still conversing with Trout. There's a look at Craig, who had seven hits and 17 at bats in the last home and home series in September against the White Sox a year ago after he was called up from Tacoma. Off speed curveball on inside, ball one. Breaking ball on the outside part of the plate, knee high, one and one to count. A breaking ball into the dirt, smothered, fortunately, by Bruce Kim, preventing the run from scoring. That was the fifth error of the year on Jimmy Morrison. Let's take another look at that breaking ball. Like falling off a table. Thank goodness for the White Sox, Kim got a piece of it and slowed it up. He's done some kind of job behind the plate this year. Now, just as Trout started into his windup, Craig stepped out. A little war of nerves going on here right now. Boy, the Sox have had their problems against this Seattle ball club the last two years. 
High chopper off home plate. Pryor has to wait for it on a high hop. Throws him out. No harm, no foul. No runs, no hits, despite the three base error on Stein's bloop to right. He's left on at third. And after three and a half here at Comiskey Park, the Mariners two, the White Sox one. Hey, you having problems sleeping? Well, stay up tonight and watch the Friday night all-night movies right here on TV 44. Tonight you'll see The Blue Gardenia with Ann Baxter and Richard Connie at 1 o'clock. Requiem for a Gunfighter at 243 with Rod Cameron. Strangers in the City at 428. Paris Express with Claude Rains at 6 a.m. And The Money Jungle at 730. And if that doesn't wear you out, nothing will. <laughs> here we go to the bottom of the fourth. Lamar Johnson leading it off. Chops it foul down the third base side. Oh, nifty play, Bobby. Bobby Wickles. <laughs> Winks, a former infielder. Can't you tell? Another side nonchalant at that ball. Do it every day, son. Just foul this time. Two strikes on Lamar. Well, the White Sox could move into first place tonight. Mike Norris off to a tremendous start with the Oakland A's. Lost a heartbreaker to a former White Sox pitcher, Jesse Jefferson, and the Toronto Blue Jays tonight. One to nothing in 11. The Texas Rangers have been beaten by the Yankees, 6 to 2, so the White Sox could move back into first place. Outside with a breaking ball. Boy, Petey's been tough. One and two to come. Jim Petey has four strikeouts tonight through the first three innings. Little swimmer. Nice diving stop by Stein. Shovels to Petey for the out. Well, Stein almost took that hit away from Claudel Washington. Let's take another look at that. For a third sacker, he's not doing a bad job over at first base tonight. That handcuff Lamar hit that one right off the label. So a 3-1 put out. Here's Harold Baines who struck out against Petey. Back in the second inning. 14th time Harold has fanned this year. Check swing, a ball low. Two to one, the Mariners lead it. They've out hit the White Sox three to two. Bouncing ball, this time it gets by Stein in the right field. A base hit for Harold Baines, who has been on a tear the last two or three ball games. And the hits are even now three apiece, and the tying run is aboard. Now here's Jimmy Morrison in a deep fly ball that was hauled in by Rodney Craig, the center fielder in deep right center. The ball traveled more than 400 feet. This is not an ideal night to play long ball. Although we've had some shots in here, the air is very heavy. We'll be getting you a final score of that NBA playoff game in Philadelphia as soon as it comes to us. Despite the fact Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was not in the Laker lineup, in fact, he didn't even make the trip. The Lakers were leading by 10 after three quarters, and if they win tonight, it's all over in six. The Lakers win it. What a feat that would be without Kareem in the lineup to win the world championship. Well, the Twins came from behind to beat the Brewers 4-3 at the Met tonight. Jerry Kuzman got the win, and Doug Corbett did save the fourth for Corbett. Brewers had led it 3 to nothing in the first inning, and that's all they got. Pearl gets away from Stein over at first. So the Twins have won, the Rangers have lost, the A's have lost. And the Royals are getting beat royally. 9 nothing after 4. California hit them with an 8 spot in the 3rd. So the White Sox could gain ground on practically everyone in their division. Save the last two teams, the Angels and the Twins. There's a ball low. Ball one to Jimmy Morrison with Baines on it first and one out. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Mariners lead by a run. Beatty, a very deliberate worker. A pitch out. Baines is going. Throw. He's out. Boy, it looked like he was in there. Smelled it coming. Let's take another look at that. There was a one hop throw down there.
Let's see where the ball is and where Harold is. Oh, can't tell. Looked to me like he had his left leg jammed on the bag before the ball got there. That's the second White Sox runner to be thrown out. So we have two out, nobody on. Two balls. The count on Jimmy Morrison. Now he steps out of the batter's box. Well, it's funny. I was talking with uh, Tony Larusa before the ball game, and I had seen Beatty pitch before. And I knew that one of his major problems was that time consuming stretch or his wind up. He is very slow to uncoil. And I asked Tony if the Sox are going to be running tonight. Well, they've been running, and they've been gunned down twice. Ball three outside. And how often does it happen when a runner is thrown out, the next batter reaches anyway? Gave him the green light and he fouls it off. Big eye fastball, three and one. So now in the bottom of the eighth at Royal Stadium, the Angels lead the Royals 11 to 1. Well, they pounded lumps on Cleveland the last time out. It appears that the Angels' run scoring drought is over. What's this, a double pump for the second straight pitch by Beatty? He walked. It. Oh, they call a strike on that at 3 and 2. That pitch looked inside and high. So now it's a full count. Red Sox beat Cleveland tonight two to one. Chuck Rainey won his third. Smash to left. Foul. By about three feet down the left field corner. It sounded like Jimmy got that one well up on the handle. Full count of three balls and two strikes, and he's checking out the handle right now. Sting a little bit. Try to pull a fastball when you hit it about six inches off your knuckles. Not much wood to work with there. But he got good, good leverage on. He struck him out. Oh man. Change up breaking ball down and away. The fifth strike out of the ball game for Jim Beatty. So the White Sox, in essence, go down in order despite the fact they picked up a hit. Nobody left. After four complete here at Comiskey Park in Chicago, the Mariners two, the White Sox one. Hey, Sox fans. You can purchase tickets for exciting White Sox baseball at the following ticket locations. Downtown at Home and Auto Insurance. South at Thornridge State Bank, the Beverly Bank, Heritage Pullman Bank, and Steel City National Bank. Southwest at Orleans State Bank. West at Hinsdale Federal Savings and Loan and at the Bank of Westmont. In Toluca at Citizens National Bank and in Morris, Illinois at the First National Bank of Morris. It's a whole new ball game at Comiskey Park. Insurance invites all you White Sox fans to Autograph Corner this coming Sunday. Autograph Corner is located in the main concourse in left field. It'll be open this Sunday from 12 noon until 12:30. The players participating in this Sunday are Wayne Nordhagen, Rich Dotson, and Harold Baines. Well, we move along to the top of the fifth. Mariners lead by a run. Catcher Larry Cox, who got an infield single. When Junior Moore cut right in front of the shortstop, Greg Pryor obstructed his view, and then Pryor rushed his throw. There's a smash in the right. He's two for two. Boy, he just jumped on that first pitch and went to the opposite field with it. Just punched it in the right. He came in hitting 145 tonight. So that's the fourth hit off Steve Trout. Cox with the leadoff single. The Mariners about hit the White Sox at this point, four to three. Here's little Julio Cruz, who's lined to short. That smashed one off Lamar Johnson, who was playing for a bunt the last time up. It ricocheted to Morrison, and Morrison won the foot race to the bag at first. He's going to bunt again and takes a pitch outside the ball. And again, Lamar was about 50 feet away. That's no teeth alley. Well, Eric Rasmussen so far is blanking the cut through five. It's one to nothing. The Padres leading at San Diego. There's a bunt foul and back, and the count is even a ball and a strike down to Cruz. One and one to count. Cox with a leadoff single here in the fifth over at first base. Mariners lead by a run. 
J.R. Richard and Houston got shut out by Dick Ruthman of the Phillies tonight in the Dome, three to nothing. There's a bunt off to the first base side, picked up by Trout, flips to Morrison for the 1-4 put out sacrifice bunt, and Cox moves into scoring position down to second. That'll bring up Jimmy Anderson, who's already driven in both Mariner runs tonight with a little roller over the first base bag. They were pulled way around to the left. Lamar Johnson was a good 25 feet away from the line, and he just squipped one off the end of his bat. Rolled past the first base bag into shallow right field for a two-run single, and that's been all the scoring so far for Seattle. Is a ball, one and one and zero. Oh. So far, it's been the bottom two hitters who've done most of the damage. Chopper off home plate, out the short. Prior charges, and Lamar stretches for the out at first. Cox held on at second, two down. There've been several of those ground balls bounced off home plate tonight. There's Pachorek who struck out and popped up to short in two trips. Tommy Pachorek. Check swing. The ball down and in. Ball one. Bruce Kim asked for the appeal, but Marty Springstead shook his head. No way. The Lakers were going to use a high-low post tonight with Irvin Magic Johnson, their fabulous six-foot-seven inch rookie playing the high post. Breaking ball down and in, ball two. Jones was going to play underneath. And through three periods, it obviously was working because the Lakers enjoyed a 93-83 lead with 12 minutes to go at the Spectrum. Ball two, the count. The top of Chorick. Smash, and it's caught by Trout. Close to first. The inning is over. Oh, smash. Steve Trout reached up and gloved it almost in self-defense. And the side is retired. No runs, one hit, one left. We've reached the halfway point here. Finally, at Comiskey Park, the Mariners two, the White Sox one. Well, with uh, a couple of minutes to go, in that ball game of the Spectrum, we understand the Lakers are hanging on for dear life. They got a two-point lead over Philadelphia going to the wire in the sixth game. If the Sixers win the night, then the seventh game will be played Sunday at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Here we go to the bottom of the fifth. Bruce Kemp leading it off, and he leans away from the pitch inside. Ball one. Mariners lead it two to one. White Sox can move into first place in the Western Division with a victory here tonight. The A's have lost, the Rangers have lost. High fly ball into fairly shallow left field. Pachorik runs out from under his cap and he makes the catch in very shallow left. One out. Bruce had struck out his first time up. Now there's Junior Moore, who got the first hit of the ball game, a smash in the hole between short and third his first time up and came around to score. So far, the only run the White Sox have come up with. Junior now has hit safely in 11 of his last 12 ball games. He also came up with a fielding gem of the night, robbing Leon Roberts of a double down the left field line and at the same time preventing a third run from scoring for the Mariners. Junior's come up with about three fine defensive plays at third. He's been a bit erratic, but he's also come up with some big plays. Drop ball. Boxes up and hits the third baseman of the throw is in time. Boy, Ted Cox played that one right off his what appeared to be his jaw. He nonchalants it. Let's see where, where that ground ball hit him. Junior got good wood on it. It hit him in the glove first, jumped up, and apparently hit him right near his neck off the top of the right shoulder. And lucky for the Mariners and Cox, it stayed in front of him. Two down. Here's Pryor, who struck out his first time up. Big Jim Beatty, 6'6", 210 pounds. Good fastball strike, just above the knees inside corner. He's got good movement on that pitch. That one ran in on Pryor. Outside corner, strike two. On two to Greg. 
who came up with five hits in a three game series at Milwaukee. Goes for a bad pitch and fouls it off. That pitch was down almost into the dirt. Still two strikes to nothing on Greg Pryor with two out. Nobody on in the bottom of the fifth for the White Sox who trail two to one. Boy, tomorrow we should have some kind of pitcher's duel. Britt Burns, four and two for the White Sox against left hander Rick Honeycutt, who is six and oh for the Mariners. Game time, 7 30. Harry's dugout show, 7 15. Jack swinging a breaking ball into the dirt. That was the same type of pitch he chased a moment ago. And we're getting a light drizzle again here at Comiskey Park. This game is one out away from being official at this point. It's official now. He struck him out. That is the sixth strikeout for Mr. Beatty tonight. Three up and three down for the White Sox. They're having the fifth inning. And if the rains come now, it is an official ball game. After five, the Mariners two, the White Sox one. In a future world gone mad, there will be no law. There will be no justice. The only hope for civilization will be Max of the main force patrol. You don't want to make Max mad. Mad Max, the maximum force of the future. Rated R. Starts today at theaters and drive-ins throughout Chicagoland. Big Leon Roberts to lead off the six for the Mariners. He is bounced to short and lined to Junior Moore. He made a spectacular catch, robbing him of a double. Outside of all. Well, in the year the American youngsters beat the Russian pros in hockey for the gold medal in the Olympics. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. This is also the year that the Los Angeles Lakers won the NBA title with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in Los Angeles when the game was played in Philadelphia. Would you believe 123 for the Lakers, 107 for the Sixers? It's all over. Foul ball sliced off to the right. Irvin Magic Johnson got 42 tonight. Keith Wilkes got, or Jamal Wilkes got 37. That's 79 between them. And they beat Dr. J in Philly. Four games to two, winning the seventh, the sixth, and turned out to be the final game tonight, 123 to 107 with Abdul Jabbar in LA. Foul back, one ball and two strikes. Boy, that's amazing. Irving at 27 to lead the Sixers. And of course, what even adds to it is the fact that the, the guy that wins it as the winning coach wasn't even the head coach at the start of the season. Ground ball in the hole. Nifty play by Pyre. Long throw. And it pulls Lamar Johnson off the bag, and Roberts will be given credit for a single. Boy, if Pryor had thrown him out, that would have been a tremendous play. Roberts pulls it into the hole. Pryor gets over there, but by the time he straightened up, he still couldn't get much on the throw, and it came to the first base side of the bag. Saw an infield hit for Roberts, leading off the sixth. We've had several of those tonight. Here's Willie Horton. He was hit by a pitch and called out on strikes the last time up. That is the fifth Seattle hit. Off Steve Trout. Low ball. Now the White Sox are going to get somebody up and throwing. Scarberry, I believe, yep. Randy Scarberry, who got the save in yesterday's hair-raising ninth inning at Milwaukee. Bouncing ball to short. This should be two. Morrison for he dropped the ball. Well, they call him out. They rule that he dropped the ball, taking it out of the glove. So it'll be a fielder's choice prior to Morrison, and the White Sox got a break in the judgment call there that. Morrison had caught the ball and registered the out and dropped it while he was trying to take it out of the glove to throw it. It's too bad because Horton moves like a walking safe down the line at first and had he been able to hang on to the ball, they probably would have completed the double play. You can see he lost it as he took it out of the glove. Fastball strike, knee high. Bill Stein, the batter. He's fly deep to right on a great catch by Baines and then 
Got on with a three base error when Morrison dropped his little dunker in the shallow right the last time up. He pulls one sharply down the line. It's knocked down by Junior Moore. Gets up, throws. Not in time. Another infield hit. Junior Moore with another great play at third to knock that ball down, and he almost got the batter out at first. Well, you can't say the White Sox infield is not playing a great baseball game tonight. Well, that ball was pulled right down the line, and Moore almost came up with his second sensational play of the night. Now Tony comes trotting out to have a word with Steve Trout. That's the sixth hit off Trout. Two infield hits in this inning, although. Both of them are hit fairly hard. There's Scarberry continuing to throw. So now Horton is the front man. He's on at second. Might take a double to get him in. Unless there are two outs, of course. Stein on at first. Smash to right. And Bates dropped the ball. It goes to the wall. I don't believe it. Horton lumbering in to score. And the runners wind up at second and third. And a bad throw gets away from Kim. Error all the way on Harold Baines. That's his fifth error of the year. And that's a season and a half for most outfielders right there. Cox hit what looked like a routine fly ball. And Harold just nonchalanted it. That's the second one that's hit his glove. But he's apparently closed his glove too quickly. And both times it's cost the White Sox runs. No RBI. And now the Sox are in a real jam. The runners on at second and third. Only one out. A run is in. And they're going to give Rodney Craig an intentional pass here to load him up. Then they'll pull the infield in, hoping for a double play or a force play at the plate. They can't really afford to let any more run score the way Beatty's been going. That'll be the first walk for Trout, an intentional pass. Craig had singled, scored, and bounced to short. Well, you can have all the talent in the world, and if you're not intent out there to what you're doing, you're going to come up with, with plays exactly like you saw there. It's just got to be a matter of lack of concentration. You can't take this game or any other game when you're playing in the big leagues for granted. Base is loaded, one out, a run is in. They've had two infield hits. A two base error in the outfield and now an intentional walk and Trout certainly deserves a better fate. Ground ball to third. Junior Moore coming home. They get the force play. Throw the first. Double play. Now, now Cox is going to claim that the ball hit his foot. Here comes Daryl Johnson out. That'll be a 5-2-3 double play. Cox didn't claim the ball hit his foot. What was he running half speed down the line for? He's trying to he's trying to scream foul after the play was over. I wonder if we get another shot of that. Well, I don't know. It was close, but why did he run? Well, the White Sox either get a break. Or they come up with a heads up play at any rate. They continue to play and they get an inning ending. Now, wait a minute. The Mariners are still out there. It's going to be a double play, I believe. Now, Tony LaRus is coming out. And Cox is still up there with a bat. Apparently, they're going to do it all over again. So they're going to call it a foul ball. Let's take another look at this. Now that's what they're going to rule to the foul ball. It looks like it may have hit his foot here. Watch carefully his left foot. Now he swings over the top of that curveball. I think it hit his foot. Where was Cox? He'd gotten out of the box late. 
late. Then he was running down the line. Now he's going to protest after the play is over, but they allow it. And so the bases are still loaded with one out. And a strike one count on the batter, Larry Cox. Well, we've had more twists and turns in this ball game than a Grand Prix auto race. And the rain is falling once again here at Comiskey Park. Keep in mind it is an official game at this point. Now here comes Steve Trout out of the dugout. Strike one is a count to the catcher Larry Cox who is two for two. The bases are loaded with one run in and one out here in the top of the sixth. The Mariners leading three to one. Now time is called. They're going to give Trout a couple of tosses since he had left the field. Well you could say this is a bizarre game and you'd be right but the way the White Sox have been playing and in the games they've been involved in this is just another ordinary night. All right here we go. Strike one pitch inside and low almost hit him. All right there's Rodney Craig who was given an intentional pass at first on second base is Ted Cox who reached on Baines' air. And over at third is Bill Stein. One and one to count to the batter, Larry Cox. Here comes the squeeze, and it's but it's foul. They tried to squeeze Stein in from third, and Cox did the next best thing. If you don't play one down in fair territory, make sure you foul it off, do something with it, don't miss it. And it's one ball and two strikes. That was a suicide squeeze because Stein started in with a pinch. So now the count is one ball and two strikes. Base is loaded, one out, and now Cox is going back to get another bat. The rain continues to fall, but it's not falling hard enough to stop the game. It's just a steady, light rain. Well, you might know it's the middle, thir middle three innings. When I get on the tube, everything out. Foul back. I've had both both fights. <laughs> now it's coming down harder. Could be a long night, folks. It already is. 10:44 here in Chicago, and we're in the top of the sixth. Here's the one-two pitch. Struck him out, swinging. Big strikeout. And the fans are really giving it to Cox. <laughs> Looked like Trout came in with a high hard one. Well, he did. That pitch was up above the letters. Three strikeouts for Steve Trout. And he won't get a bigger one. Here's Julio Cruz. He's lined to short, bounced out, sacrificed. 0 for 2. Fastball high, ball one. Well, the inning should be over. And they're going to call it again. That's going to be it for a while. They've signaled for the. There's Gene Bossert. Ground crew is going to take out the tarp again. We're going to have our second rain delay with a ball one count to Julio Cruz with two out and the bases jammed here in the top of the sixth inning to run in with Seattle leading at three to one. Here come the boys in the raincoats. <laughs> oh yeah, now it's really coming down. <laughs> I don't know. I was confident all along we were going to get this game resumed. At this point, I'm not all conf that confident that we're going to get it resumed after this point. We'll just have to wait. They'll wait quite a while because the game now is in in jeopardy. It is a complete game right now. If the rains. All play for the rest of the night right now. It'll go into the books as a two to one Seattle victory in five innings. Everything that happened in this inning will be washed out because it was not completed. When the home team is leading, 
It can be a complete game after four and a half innings as long as the visiting team or the team trailing has five turns at bat. That's what constitutes a complete ball game that is rained out at any point past the fifth inning. But we're in the top of the sixth here with a run in, bases loaded, two out. Mariners leading at three to one. Well, tomorrow night, weather permitting in the second game, and we understand the weather forecast isn't all that great for the weekend either. But we have a, a great potential out here tomorrow night with two of the best young left-handers in the American League, Britt Burns, four and two for the White Sox against Rick Honeycutt, who's six and zero oh for the Mariners. And then in Sunday afternoon's ball game with the Mariners, Francisco Barrios will make his first appearance of the year here at Comiskey Park. He got his first start the other day. At Milwaukee pitched three very fine innings before running out of gas in the fourth, but he'll pitch against Rob Dressler for the Seattle Mariners. And then Monday night, the Twins come to town for night games on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then, of course, the uh, strike action, if indeed there's going to be a player strike, and it looks more and more like there's going to be one, and that would take effect at that particular point, and the season would be suspended, uh, bearing the outcome of uh, the labor negotiations between the Players Association and the owners. Well, they've done a quick job in getting the tarp out, and just as they get the tarp out, the rains have really subsided here now. It's still coming down, but it's a light drizzle now. Now, that looks terrible, but it doesn't look that bad when you look out on the field. <laughs> Guys are trying to show me up, huh? <laughs> now, there's a look at the Mariner dugout. And uh, being Mariners, they ought to be used to this. We ought to be used to it, too, because this is just about all the White Sox have had to, to play with all year. It's been cold or wet or both. And yet the White Sox have proven themselves to be a good bad, bad weather ball club. There's Gene Bossard on the right. He was the head groundskeeper here and his son. They've been at it a long time and they've done an excellent job this year here at Comiskey Park. They rebuilt the outfield. They put more drains in the outfield. Well, the tarp is in place. Well, we're going to return you to the studios now for uh, a short sports feature and then we'll be checking in with you from time to time. Uh, to give you the progress here on the weather. Right now, it has stopped raining. So let's take another look at one of Leo DeRocher's sports highlight shows. Hi, I'm Leo DeRocher. Welcome to Magic Moments in Sports. In 1922, the New York Giants did their spring training in San Antonio, Texas. Well, I'd like to take you back to those early days and give you a look at some of the old giant greats. Mr. John McGraw, the manager of the Giants for 30 years, one of the roughest, toughest baseball men to ever wear a uniform. And there's Milwaukee, Ralph Schinner. And giant scout, Kinsell, and his son, Bob. Irish Musial, boning his back. And McLaughlin and Stanton, two ball players with a combined height of 13 feet. Mr. McGraw liked them big and tough in those days. Here are some of the boys horsing around. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Mr. McGraw wasn't in camp that day. The Fordham Flash, Frankie Frisch, pitcher Waylon Dean. Mr. McGraw converted this fellow, Jack Bentley, from a pitcher into a first baseman. And there's one of the great place hitters of all time, Heine Grove, with his famous bottle bat. He sure could poke singles to every field. Here's 
Mr. McGraw, hitting to the infielders. You either caught the ball or the next train. And here's a shot of the great Rogers Hornsby. A few years later, he was a superstar. If you look closely at these pitchers working out, you can see Freddie Fitzsimmons. He's the second one from the right. This was catcher Shandy Hope. There's lefty Bill Walker. picture of a pitcher who later became known as the old master, Carl Hubble, who'd won 253 games for the Polo Grounders. And last but not least, the brilliant giant first baseman, Bill Terry, who later became a great giant manager. That was quite a group that Mr. McGraw had in spring training in 1922. Hornsby, Fitzsimmons, Hubble, Terry. They won the pennant in the World Series that year. No wonder. Brooklyn fans yelled, wait till next year for a long time. But in the 50s, they finally got a chance to howl. What a collection of ball players they had over at Ebbets Field. Here's the great Jackie Robinson, building one of Allie Reynolds' pitches in the 52 World Series. The brilliant Pee Wee Reese. And what a double play combination this was. Reese and Robinson. Roy Campanella used to hit them into the center field bleachers, even off Robin Roberts. And here's the homer can't be smashed off Vic Rashi to win the third game of the 52 series. And this was the Duke, hitting a Snyder special into Bedford Avenue. Man, could he hit him high and far. When you pulled your infield back, he would do this to you. Duke Snyder was not only a great hitter, but a wizard with the glove. Watch him go back, back, back. Look at that catch. At first base, the bums had another man who could kill you with the long ball. The great Gil Hodges. And one of the finest outfielders in the game, Paul Perillo. with a glove. How about this for robbery? Johnny Mize could have murdered him. This is Carl Erskine. And who can forget old Preacher Rowe? They were a great team in those days. Brooklyn fans have had some great memories to relive, and they deserve it. In the World Series of 1938, Joe McCarthy's Yankees and a fellow named Red Ruffing murdered Gabby Hartman's Chicago Cubs. And the grand old man of baseball, Commissioner Judge Landis, he was right there to see 21-game winner Ruffing pitch and slug the Cubs four straight. And anyone ever forget this fabulous guy? Lou Gehrig, even though he was in the last years of his career, they took no chance. 
Here was another ball player it's good to see again. The man who took the baby's place in the outfield. Twinkle Toe Salter. Remember this hustling rookie. That's the flag, Joe Gordon. Hey, and here's Diggy Dean coming in from the bullpen to relieve in the last game. You didn't see this scene too often. Here's maybe the greatest catcher of all time, Bill Dickey. Wasn't he something? And Frank Brissett. What a ball club. Dickey, Garrick, Gordon, Selkirk, Ruffing. And how about this fella? Old reliable Tommy Henry. What he didn't do to the Cubs in 38. This was a very familiar scene in Yankee Stadium for a long time. Good again, everyone. This is Joe McConnell back at Comiskey Park as we have uh, gone through our second rain delay. That was a quick but rather uh, severe shower, and then just about the time they got the tarp on the field, it began to shut down again. And Randy Scarberry now has come on to pitch for Steve Trout, and he'll inherit a one-ball count on Julio Cruz with the bases loaded to run in and two out for the Mariners here in the top of the sixth inning. The current score is three to one, Seattle. Scarberry. The last time he came into a ball game, faced a bases loaded situation with two out in an inning, and that was yesterday afternoon in the ninth when he retired Sixto Lascano on a line drive to Thad Bosley and left in the ball game that preserved a six to four win for the White Sox and Rich Dotson. Scarberry earned his second save. He's one and one on the year with a 4.59 earn run average. For Randy, this is his. 11th appearance of the year. He's pitched 20 innings, allowed 19 hits, 11 runs all earned. He has struck out 12 and walked six. So Trout goes five and two thirds innings. He's given up three runs, two of them earned. The run is unearned on the two base error assessed to right fielder Harold Baines, who dropped the fly ball in this inning. Of the six hits, none were for extra bases, six singles, and three of them, including both hits in this sixth inning. For infield hits, there's Trout. He struck out three, walked one, and hit a batter. Now Tony Larusa is talking with catcher Bruce Kim as Scarberry continues to heat up. Steve is going to hang around to see the outcome of this inning before he goes down and gets some ice on that pitching arm. And Shane Raleigh now is loosening up in the Mariner bullpen, little left-handed reliever. He's considered to be the ace of their relief corps, and he'll probably come on to pitch the bottom of the sixth inning against the White Sox. Jim Beatty has given up just one run on three hits, struck out five and walked two in the five innings that he has pitched. So it's been an on again, off again, on again, off again, now on again ball game tonight due to the weather. Quick check of the scoreboard. The Red Sox beat Cleveland at Cleveland tonight, two to one. Chuck Rainey the winner, Denny the loser. Two to one, Baltimore over Detroit. Flanagan won his fourth of the year. Petrie lost his first after two victories. The Yankees beat the Texas Rangers six to two. Tommy John now seven and zero. Doc Medich lost for the first time in four decisions. Rupert Jones hit two out tonight for the Yankees, and Reggie Jackson hit number eight. Toronto beat Oakland in eleven innings, one to nothing. A double four hitter. Jesse Jefferson one and uh, one going in tonight. Won his second game of the year. And Mike Norris, who's been sensational this year for Oakland, lost for the first time in six decisions. He already had the lowest ERA in the league. It was tops in strikeouts, and he went 11 innings tonight, gave up one run, and lost it. There's Daryl Johnson, the Seattle manager. California clobbered Kansas City 11 1, pounding out 16 hits. Keeson got the win. Gale now 0 5, the loser for the Royals. And the Twins got a run in the seventh, scored two in the eighth, and came from behind to beat the Milwaukee Brewers at the Met tonight, 4 3. Jerry Kuzman got the victory. He came on in the eighth inning. And then Doug Corbett came on to pitch the ninth to gain his fourth save. McClure lost it for the Brewers. Over in the National League this afternoon, Seaver had a no-hitter.
going into the seventh inning and with two out Ellis Valentine beat out an infield hit. And in the next inning the bottom of the eighth Montreal got two runs and beat Seaver in the Cincinnati Reds two to one despite the fact Seaver pitched a three hitter. Steve Rogers got the win. The Mets beat Atlanta in Atlanta tonight five to three. The Phillies shut out the Houston Astros in Houston beating J.R. Richard three to nothing on a five hitter by Ruffin. The Cubs trail the San Diego Padres three to nothing after seven in San Diego. Kruko against Rasmussen. The Pirates lead the Dodgers four to two. L.A. batting in the bottom of the fifth on the West Coast. Robinson and Russell of Homer to that ball game, and there's no score after three in San Francisco with the Cardinals and the Giants. Forsh, that's Bob Forsh against Ed Halicki of the Giants. Scarberry continues to throw, and we're just about ready to resume this one once again. Julio Cruz has a one and zero count. The bases are loaded. Stein on at third. Ted Cox on at second. Rodney Craig at first. Two out. A run in. And the Mariners leading three to one in the top of the sixth. The Yankees with a win tonight are now 18 and 12. Toronto with a victory, 17 and 12. The Jays remain right on the Bombers' heels. Just a half game out. There's the pitch now. Strike a slider on the outside corner. Cruz, a switch hitter, now moves around. An 18-minute delay. So we've got a total of one hour and 48 minutes rain delay here tonight. Swing away, strike two. So Scarberry's come in here and fired two strikes, and now he has Julio Cruz in a hole. One and two the count. Bouncing ball to Morrison. He'll have to go to first. And Lamar tags it. He could have touched the bag just as well. A 4-3 put out, an unearned run. But they come up with one run on two infield hits. There was an error, a big one by Harold Baines. And an intentional walk Freeman left on. And we've completed five and a half with the Mariners leading three to one. The best in sports, the most in sports. WSNS TV 44, Chicago. Well, maybe the second rain will turn out to be a rain of providence for the White Sox because Beanie is done. He pitched five innings, gave up one run on three hits, struck out five and walked two. And he seemed to be almost overpowering at times. And Shane Raleigh, the little left-hander, comes in now. There's a look at Raleigh. He's one and one on the year. This is his 11th appearance. He's picked up one save with an earned run average of 4.91. In 10 appearances, he's pitched 18 in the third innings, given up 19 hits, 10 runs all earned. He is been wild this year. He struck out six and walked 14. So Raleigh is in now to try to protect the two run lead for the starter Jim Beatty. Last year Raleigh was the ace of the bullpen and had a great year going when he got involved in a fracas after a ball game up in Milwaukee when he had picked up a victory or a save that night. He's from the uh, Racine area and some fans some youngsters picked a fight with a couple members of his family and uh, he got involved in the fracas and cracked a knuckle in his pitching hand and missed about two months of the season. Here's Molinaro leading it off of the Sox in the sixth and he takes a slider outside for a ball. Raleigh was five and nine with 11 saves and 48 appearances last year in Seattle. Foul ball out of play. One ball and one strike. Continues to rain. One ball and one strike to Molinero. The top of the order. Ground ball and squibber right off the end of the bat. And Cox throws him out. So Molly with a walk is now 0 for 2. He fly to left and bounced out to third. Here's Claudel Washington who's hit off Stein's glove at first. Drove in the only run so far tonight for the White Sox. 12,669 to paid here tonight. 12,669 on team night, Fantasy Island night. Well, if we'd have had a decent night weather-wise, we should have gone well over 20. Foul out of play on the third base side. Strike one. The Sox now this year. They've drawn 270,000 plus. Fouled again. He hit it right off his fist. Weekly over to the third base side. Two strikes and no balls to Claudel Washington.
On to the count. Low and away with a breaking ball. One and two the count. Raleigh now makes his home in Bellevue, but he was born and raised, and his family still lives in Racine. Foul. Still one and two. He'll be 25 years of age on the 27th of August. And it's raining hard here. They have a tough time rescheduling this game because they'd like to reschedule it in September. And the Mariners come in for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. Check swing of all, two and two. The Mariners do have an off date on that Thursday, but it's the only off date they have in the entire month. If they were to fill that, they would play something like 33 consecutive days, and the Players Association's a 19-day limit. Stuck him out swinging, two down. Thought Ellis fan twice tonight. Number one for the little left hander. And that is seven for the ball game. Beattie had six. I think I said he had five. Two down. Here's Chet Lemon. He's flying to left and bounced to short in two trips. Left a butt, takes a strike. 0 oh 1. On again, off again, rain. It's subsiding a little bit. High fastball, one and one. I think the only way we're going to get this turkey in is just to play it. But foul, one and two. Chet trying to bunt his way aboard. He had dumped that one about halfway down the third base line. There wouldn't have even been a play at first. Good article in the Tribune today, their sports weekend section on Chet Lemon. Personal look at him. Very articulate young man, a very serious young man. Here's the one two pitch. Roller to second baseman Cruz. And the Sox go down in order in the sixth. So Shane Riley is a one, two, three inning. Well, Harry will be back to take you the rest of the way here on TV 44. After six complete in the rain here at Comiskey Park, the Mariners three, the White Sox one. Carry back in the ballpark. It's raining again. But I think they may just go on through and finish it. It's not going to get any better. White Sox trailing. White Sox tonight have been as bad as the weather. Steve Trout deserved a much better fate. He should have even really should have been scored on. Here's Jim Anderson who drove in. Two runs on a ground single to right. How can the pitcher be ready not to hit her? To lead it off. A wet, cold night in Chicago. Anderson hitting 278. Scarberry's pitch is in there, beauty. A strike call. ball pass more in the left field a hit Anderson grounds a single to left Seattle who's always given the White Sox trouble this is a team that's only three years old they've won 21 lost 22 during those three years. Tex Wortham starting to warm up in the bullpen again. A wet, cold night. There's the ball bunted beautifully. Junior Moore's only play. First base. Sacrifice. A sacrifice for Sharing. Play goes from Moore to Morrison. There's Leon Roberts now. Wortham down in the bullpen. Looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh inning. 
Lamar Johnson will be leading it off. Johnson, Baines, Morris. We're going to hold him here. Maybe we can get something going. One man out. The pitch to Roberts is in there. A beauty. Strike call. Cubs batting in the ninth inning. Randy Jones and San Diego have them shut out three to nothing. The pitch. A little bit low on inside. Randy Scarberry who picked up the save at Milwaukee yesterday afternoon. Here's the pitch. Swung and a miss. Chased a breaking ball. Two strikes and a ball. One man out. Ball game in the seventh. Anderson a lead off second base. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball of the low. That evens a count of two and two. What a depressing night. Rainy, cold. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch on the way. Just missed outside ball three. Willie Horton on deck. Three balls, two strikes. Jim Anderson takes a lead off second base. Time is called. There's a pitch ground ball. There's a throw high. Safe. Briar's throw is high. And everybody is safe. Roberts gets a life. This ground ball right to Pryor. Plenty of time, but look at the throw. Lamar leaps high, tries to make the tag. That's the kind of night it's been. That's a third air charge, and there are at least three other plays could have been called there. And now here's Willie Hart. With runners at first and third. The infield playing back. Swung against. Had a good cut and a low breaking ball. The outfield plays deep. Randy Scarberry trying to get out of trouble. Trouble he really doesn't deserve to be in. Throw over to first. The runner back. Bill Stein on deck. One strike or nothing. High pop out. Lamar Johnson under the ball. The wind carrying it. He drops it. Conditions are terrible, but of course they're just as fair for one team as the other. They haven't made an error. We've made four. That gives Willie Horton another chance. Two strikes and nothing. The mist. The steady mist. Continues to come down. Willie Horton. With runners at first and third. He's just been given a new life. Now Scarberry is ready. Look where Horton stands. Right on top of the plate. He struck him out. Scarberry strikes him out. Here now is Bill Stein. He's one out of three tonight. Cubs are batting in the ninth. San Diego leading three to nothing. Infield back. Two gone. We're in the top of the seventh. Wow, pitch 
to the run score. There's a runner trying for third. A wild pitch enables a run to score. Roberts goes all the way around to third. And it's a four to one ball game. Watch the replay. Kim didn't move. He didn't move his feet at all. Tony LaRusso out there talking to the umpire. Joe Brinkman. What an exasperating night. First of all, you're coming home after playing five ball. Coming home for a weekend series, you expect to see a big crowd. Have a great promotion going with tattoo. And you have a miserable day. And then you take the field and play a miserable game. Swung and he missed. A ball and a strike. High pop foul out of play. You know, Seattle's an expansion club. We're only three years old. They made a total of 26 errors this season. The White Sox already have made 34. Two strikes and a ball. Fly ball, center field, Lemon on the run is there. So one run, one hit, two air, two left. We go down to the bottom of the seventh to score. Seattle four, White Sox one. All right. Let's sing. All right, Nancy. Everybody. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Oh, it's root, root, root for the white sock. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two. Three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Hey! Seaback and Ochre play Reeson and Stewart in World Doubles Action, Sunday at 5 on World Championship Tennis on WSNS TV 44 Chicago. We have Joe Simpson going in the left field now. For Seattle, who's leading four to one, Simpson in left field, and Mario Mendoza is playing shortstop. Mendoza at short. Here's Lamar Johnson to lead it off. White Sox trail four to one. High fly ball, easy out right field. Roberts is there waiting for it. Makes the catch. And here's Harold Baines. He's one out of two. He single in the fourth was out trying to steal. Final score, San Diego shut out the Cubs. Three to nothing. That's the second time in a row that Randy Jones has shut the Cubs out, and it's his third straight shutout. One out, nobody on. Pitch to Baines. He bunts in the air. Cox dies for it in foul territory, can't reach it. Made a good try. One strike and nothing. Ball game in the seventh. White Sox have made only three hits. Shane Raleigh from Racine, Wisconsin. Good fastball right in there. Swan, and he missed. The ball gets 
pitch away from the catcher. Baines is going to reach base. Baines struck out but reached first. But Cox could handle the ball. You know something? Cox missed that ball by as wide a margin as Baines did swinging. So it's a strikeout, but he reaches base. And the third strike gets away. Little Freddie Brzezowski. No, he foul tipped that ball, so apparently he has to return to the play. No wonder Cox missed it by so much. A foul tip, he's still alive. The ball gets away from the left field. They go Baines to second. So after being called back, and the ruling is a foul tip that he reached first base on, Baines hits the next pitch solidly in the left center. Now here's Simpson coming over. Call it a double for Baines, no error. Here's Morrison. The White Sox trailing by three. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Morrison is nothing out of two. He had nothing out of four yesterday. Morrison's one out of his last 12. Here's the pitch. Right in there, a fastball. He's in the hole, straight two. Two strikes and nothing. Fastball barely missed outside. Oh, for a base hit here, that would cut it down to two and the tying run would be at the plate. Two strikes and a ball. That evens a count of two and two. Shane Raleigh was trying to hit that inside corner. Second time Morrison has fanned tonight. He and Washington have each struck out twice. Raleigh's had two strikeouts since he came in. Jim Beattie had six over the first five innings before he left the game. So Seattle's fanned eight men already. Here's Bruce Kim. Nothing out of two swings and he fouls it off. Four.